All right, welcome everybody. I think we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, I'd like to introduce myself, Brian Davis. Um, come from a come from. I work at Onyx uh, Enterprise Solutions, uh, Vice President for Cloud Services, Cloud um, Delivery. Uh, been here about seven months or so, and I come from a large financial institution. Uh, I want to talk today about OpenStack and backup. It's probably the first time you've ever had those two words in the same sentence. So the questions are backup, data assurance, data protection. Do we care? This is the cloud after all. If you think about the things that we've been doing uh, in OpenStack or cloud delivery, backup was never a consideration. The community and corporate IT believes workloads in the cloud should be elastic, they should be ephemeral. The community, if you've been to any previous summits, you didn't hear things about uh, backup. Cloud, what's going on here? Cloud workloads are ephemeral. We do not need backups. Let's try this one more time. A uh, conversation that, that I was actually a part of uh, when we were being first introduced to cloud, when we were being first introduced to backups, that, hey, we're going to redo all of our applications. They're all going to be last. They're all going to be cloud aware. There was a couple of essays sitting around the table saying, do we have any cloud aware applications? The other guy goes, I don't think so. They, I don't think they even knew what that was. Um, but they said, hey, with the, move to, with the move to the cloud, how do we back up the data if there's no backups out there? The other guy's stupid. This is the cloud. We don't need backups. Okay. So IT organizations have this question is, is, do we need a backup solution? No, of course not. All the apps that land in our cloud are cloud aware. They're elastic. They are resilient. How many people agree with that? How many people in here in this room have large enterprise environments? Show of hands. A few of us, mid, mid size, small. Okay. So all of you that have environments, every app that you move into the cloud are cloud aware, cloud resilient, elastic. They know how to grow and shrink, right? If that's the case, you're doing great. You're probably the 1%. I know in my experience, when we brought our cloud up, when we brought up OpenStack, we moved in all of our legacy stuff from our legacy environments, and we were still living by, hey, we don't need backups. Well, one day we had a business impact. Business partner comes to us, the customer says, uh, hey, Brian, we need to uh, restore, this, uh, restore this data. And all of us in the room just looked at each other like, uh, oops. Okay. Cloud and virtualization in the enterprise requires data protection, period. And you notice I said data protection and not backup. Okay. Most private cloud environments still host legacy applications and legacy workloads. They have no ability to take advantage of cloud elasticity. Cloud and OpenStack lack the virtualization features that some of our you know, legacy hosting environments had. Struggling with this thing here, sorry. So the question is backups versus data assurance. Our legacy thought is backups were modeled around how to capture and store point in time data captures. You install an agent, back up some data. If you have a failure, you go back, hour or two, you can restore the, uh, the data or the VM or whatever. Well, an hour or two, if you think about that, in some environments may cost millions of dollars, okay? So current thought is we need to be looking at data protection. Data protection is modeled around availability and recovery. Some of the things that we're gonna talk about today is gonna, we're gonna look at image snaps, flexibility, fault tolerance, scalability, and instant recovery of, instant recovery of, a, uh, of a VM or an application or, or, or your data. So the question is, how do we solve 
the enterprise need for data protection in our OpenStack clouds? That was a question that I had uh, in my previous roles. This is a question that I work with my customers today. I want to introduce uh, Trilio Data really here from Trilio Data, and we're going to talk about exactly how we do that. Hi, uh, my name is Murali Balcha. I'm CTO of Trilio Data. You know, uh, thanks everyone for showing up this one. This is the first session um, in the OpenStack, and uh, I'm very excited that this is one of the first one. <laughs> um, so how is it going so far? Good? Thank you. Yeah, this, I, I think I've been uh, coming here like since Danube. I see this growing leaps and bounds. Um, I think this time it probably probably touches like eight, 9,000. Very good. Um, I, we, we discussed uh, uh, backup and recovery on and off. And uh, you know, there are, um, so some of them kind of raised their hands saying that they have some uh, production ready uh, workloads that are running in the, in the OpenStack. Um, how many people dabble with um, the challenges of the backup and recovery? Any, any show of hands? So how is your experience so far? Good? It's all, it's all done. So, you know, th there are um, few APIs that are available in Nova, right, or uh, Cinder. Um, depending on how you lay out your workloads, you may be able to put together some solution, or you may put together some solution purely based on the storage-based snapshots. But at the end of the day, when it comes to real enterprise uh, backup and recovery, um, putting together solution just based on Nova APIs or the Sender APIs, or volume snapshots themselves, it's going to be challenging, right? Um, so this is the problem that we are trying to solve here. <laughs> so um, when you look at uh, um, the open stack, right? Sorry. I think I'm getting used, <laughs> used to this clicker, but please uh, excuse me for. Um, so when, when you are considering uh, your backup and recovery for your cloud, like what, what is the thing that comes to your mind? Like what do, what do you guys think like what the backup should look like? That is kind of different from what you have been doing for your bare metal, or maybe what different than from what uh, VMware you've been doing with, right? Um, you know, I pose this question for, for various people like when, when we go to the customer site and, and say, okay, they need a backup, but what does it mean? And they said, look, okay, okay, I need to back up uh, the controller, right? Um, obviously, that's the first, first impression that I get. And then suddenly, when we start digging down deep, I, the, the immediate, immediate uh, discussion that goes back to is, okay, they really need to back up tenants, right? They, that is the way business value is. And most of the controller database, obviously, you can recreate that um, uh, with your DevOps scripts. And uh, any snapshot you take at the, at the database level in the, in the controller, that may not reflect what's happening in the tenant space. Because at the moment you take the snapshot, some tenant may have created a new resource or deleted a new resource. So the snapshot that we have may not reflect what is out there. So even though you have a record of what is there in the tenant space, you don't have all the information, right? So the other way is, um, well, try out um, some well-known uh, uh, solutions out there. Right, uh, backup and recovery is not something new like uh, containers, but um, <clears throat> but this this is something that every IT um, has to implement uh, based on the kind of uh, workload that they are running. So let's start with what they have right now, uh, and then try to try to do a lot of scripting and try to basically put together a solution that works for your product cloud. But something changed, right? Something changed. Otherwise, we won't be embracing OpenStack. Something radically changed. Uh, compared to what, what we, we've been doing for the last 20 years in the IT. And that is forcing us to take a completely new look of how the data is protected, right? Um, what are those? There are two things. One is, um, Brian talked a little bit about it. It is about highly distributed nature of the workloads, right? It's not like um, you want a high-performance database and then you basically uh, buy the baddest and the beefest uh, server out there. And then um, 
load up your database, and then start backing up, right? These are scale out. Um, that means you basically provision not one VM or one volume, you provision multiple VMs, multiple um, volumes, um, and then your data is spread across these VMs, right? So what good is to back up individual files within a VM <clears throat> when you don't have the complete picture? And the second one is the operating model, right? Com cloud operating model. You have the multi-tenancy, and you have the agility, and you have the, you have the elasticity. So when, you know, I was talking to my, one of my IT friend, right, whose day job is to uh, take a backup of SAP or the Oracle that's, app that's running in there. And then for the compliance need, they have to go and test um, whether the backups are running or not every six months. So I asked them, how do you test it, right? So the first thing they do is we will identify a server, uh, back, uh, the standby server, that has identical configuration, and then take six months old copy and then load it up and make sure that the application comes online, right? Well, the need to test the backup, need to make sure that you are compliant is still there, right? But there is a better way to do these things because you don't need to basically keep a standby server. Um, it is cloud and it is agile and elastic. So that means you have all the resources out there um, that you can do a better job at uh, meeting your compliance, right? You don't, you don't, need, you don't, you don't need to do that um, old way. So these are the two, two things that are, um, that are predominantly like forcing us to take a, a completely new look at how you do uh, data protection in the cloud, right? So let's, let's uh, dig down deep a little bit into those two aspects. One is scale out distributed workload, right? You know, this is a typical flow, right? Um, you have the heat template, uh, some other orchestration tool that has application template, um, essentially blueprint. So you have what VMs to provision, what flavor of VMs to provision, what network to configure, what storage volumes to add. And then once you have those things, and then you have some puppets agent running in each of these VMs to do the configuration management, to tweak um, the application configuration, to basically install some packages, right? So you start with the provisioning, the basic provisioning, and then over the period of time, you basically fine tune your deployment to make sure that the application that you're running is meeting all your, um, uh, all your operational parameters, right? Now, your application are up and running, and then now after some time, obviously you need to scale out. You know, it's not going to stand there. You probably scale out in terms of uh, users or in terms of um, uh, database capacity. Now, how do you define a point in time in these distributed workloads, right? It's not a list of files. It is, when you, when you look at a point of time, real, um, you know, if you want to go back to some time there, right? And then you want to basically quickly do a test of whether you got the right backup, right, for, for, for various reasons. So the data is there with the traditional backup. You can back up um, your files to the hard content, but whatever, what about the other things um, that make up your application, right? It basically defines your application context. Um, you know, what the CPU power, what the, what the network configuration. If you have opened some ports back then, um, do you remember those, those uh, security groups that you applied to those VMs at the time, right? So going back to point in time includes standing up the whole thing um, so that you can verify your backup, right? So, but if you were to use your traditional methods and then do that um, uh, testing to make sure that your backups are running, what do you do? You need to basically consolidate a lot of files that you backed up over the period of time, right? Um, and depending on how backups are set up, whether it's incremental or, or full backups and how frequently you take the full backup, the consolidation, you, you, need to, you, need to, you need to do a little bit of consolidation of all the files. And then you need to remember you know, what images that you booted from, some, some of the hints you may get it from the heat template that you used. And the next one is, um, Next one is uh, obviously you need to provision all the volumes uh, with the right capacity, and then format fo format those things to the right uh, file systems, and then apply the necessary security groups. So you need to do all these things to make sure that you recover that point in time, right? So what is the guarantee that you got, you get everything right, right? What if you miss even a simple detail, right? Not not having a right patch in a, in, a, in a VM, or 
not applying the right security groups. All those things matter a lot, right? Yeah, especially when you are under pressure to basically recover your application to a point in time, right? Any little things will basically affect um, you know, how, how much time it takes to recover your uh, application. And, uh, and then how confident that are you that uh, this recovery is going to work, right? Whether this is a repeatable process, a proven repeatable process. So there is a, there is a matter of um, doing it manually, some of them automating those things, and then basically copying the data, right? So in this kind of workload, what would be a right solution for you, right? An ideal solution would be like, you know, obviously I don't want backup policies on a file basis or on a volume basis. I want my backup policies to the entire application, right? And the entire application could be one VM, multiple volumes, or multiple VMs, multiple volumes, multiple networks. No matter what it is, right? It, whatever your application requires, right? Your data protection policies has to be applied there. And then you, and your backup solution need to basically keep track of what is being changed in the environment. So, so you always have a right point in time, right? And your backup API should not include backing up a lot of individual things, but it should provide some kind of a, um, one API, no matter what your complex the job is, like what, what the complex stuff your application is, right? And, uh, and the other thing is obviously the restore is the most important thing. You can back up uh, your hard content, but if the restore doesn't work, what good is, is that, right? So your restore has to be as simple as that. Right? You should be able to restore the entire uh, workload that you backed up, a multi-VM, multi multi-network, multi-volume multi uh, back uh, application uh, to that single point in time with ease, right? whether it's uh, through one API or with one click into the GUI. Right? And obviously, when, when you simplify how you back up and how you recover, you have high confidence in how you can uh, repeat that process. Right? Um, so, this is one of the one of the dominant thing that is affecting how you protect your data workloads. And what about the cloud infrastructure? So, um, the traditional applications they are central administrator, right? We have we have a central administrator setting setting up the solution, and um, you run some agents in uh, in the VM and then are, are your host and then backing up your files, right? Now. With a with a multi tenancy model in the cloud, it is all about empowering your tenant. You know, as a cloud administrator, how much you can keep track what applications each tenant is running. It's, it's not possible. It's not even cloud model, right? So you need to basically empower your tenant with the right service into the cloud so that they are, um, they own their uh, responsibility for the data protection, right? So they, because they understand what applications that they're running, what the application boundaries are, right? What VMs corresponds to a particular application, so what VMs to include as part of their data protection policy. So next one is agent-based file backups. Yeah, it works, but they don't really understand how the, what the infrastructure underneath that application is, right? Unless your application is at the infrastructure level, unless it understands uh, the VMs and the flavors and the glands and the sender, ty sender types and the networking, whether, whether it has a private network between the VMs and then a, a public um, interface um, uh, to the application. So, all these things either you have to maintain somehow um, or your backup solution need to basically understand, record those, um, that, that information so you can orchestrate the whole recovery in a single step. Um, what about the scale? So cloud is all about horizontal scale, right? You may start with um, 100 VMs and then grow into um, 10,000 VMs. Or you may start with the 10 nodes, and then you may go up to like 100, uh, 200 nodes, right? Um, and also, you know, wh what is, how, how, how do you make sure that your backup solution scales with your uh, cloud, right? So most of the um, solutions out there, those are like fixed capacity. They come up with a, saying 100 terabyte uh, DDoW plans, right? So what if you are growing beyond that and you want to grow it? Now you can buy one more appliance, and then now you have two appliances that you want to manage, right? So it's not really, it, it can scale. So your solution need to scale with your, um, with, with your tenants, whether you grow from 10 tenants to 20 tenants, or compute, everything that goes um, as part of the cloud management, right? And then DevOps, right? Very, very critical part, right? Um, so <laughs> um, I just put that um, joke there, like you must be kidding. But uh, 
that that is true, right? Like DevOps is a relatively a new phenomenon, um, but uh, most of the applications that have been developed, like it's been there for 20 years. Um, and uh, obviously, DevOps paradigm doesn't really fit into what what the traditional uh, uh, traditional solutions out there. Um, uh, your backup solution need to be part of your cloud, right? Uh, just like you are automating your compute and the volume of the storage of the network, you should be able to deploy, uh, upgrade, and automate your backup solution just with the DevOps tools. You don't need to think twice um, uh, or, or, in, or have a different management plan uh, for managing your backup and recovery. So um, with those two goals in mind, um, back in 2003, um, we proposed um, a specification called Raksha. Um, that, we did that um, and then realized, oops, um, I think we are too early for OpenStack. <laughs> um, when, uh, when, we are, uh, when we are basically talking to a lot of people, um, I, I think the reality is that it was very, very early uh, in the OpenStack. Not many people really deployed OpenStack and then backup and recovery is not really at the top of their mind, right? So we pulled back a little bit on that, and then we we, we commercialized um, uh, our product based on the specifications we put together at um, at, at, uh, at OpenStack. So um, we, the company founded like two years back, two and a half years back. Um, we have a pretty good background on the on the virtualization, backup, and uh, disaster recovery, and the cloud infrastructure. Um, my CEO has uh, uh, involved with the numerous IPOs and uh, acquisitions. So that's a brief uh, discussion about uh, what our company is, but we'll talk about like what our solution is, right? Um, so just like um, um, the any other service um, that you use in the OpenStack, like the compute service or network or image service, so ours is backup and recovery as a service, right? Um, it um, it has the same look and feel of um, any other service. So it has the Python-based wrapper APIs. Uh, it has a RESTful API. Uh, to manage, uh, to define your backup jobs and then manage the backup jobs. Um, and the form factor for us is it's a, it's a QCOWT image that we ship. It's a Ubuntu uh, based image. Um, we have all the IP there. Um, so that it includes uh, the scalable uh, backup engine. Um, you can, it, it, uh, it's scalable in the sense like obviously each VM comes with a finite capacity of uh, backup. But um, if you are growing your uh, cloud, you can instantiate multiple um, multiple VMs of that same image, and then and then scale uh, your your solution. Um, it is truly multi multi tenant. We register into the Keystone as a as a backup as service, um, and then um, we we authorize the key, uh, the tokens, and then um, we perform the work on behalf of uh, the each tenant. Um, and deploying our solution is uh, pretty much. Uh, and non-disruptive. So whether whether you already have a running cloud or whether you are starting from from the ground, um, it's a drop-in solution. Um, I, I'll, I'll I'll briefly talk about our architecture and what the components are, and uh, none of the components are disruptive. So um, I, this is what I've been preaching, right? Like in the last uh, two slides or four four slides. Uh, backup it has to be beyond file backup or volume backup. It has to be at the environmental level, right? It, it, but right, like if, you, if, you, if it understands your application and then if it basically discovers what the resources that your application is using and then pull those things as part of the backup policies and then, uh, and then back up those things, that's an ideal solution. So we could do that for, for well-known applications like Cassandra, MongoDB, where um, we can discover what, what VMs are there um, that, that, that those applications are, uh, are running. But even otherwise, you can group all the related VMs together as one backup job, and then we discover what resources are mapped to each VM. For example, what networks are mapped, and what sender volumes are mapped. And we take the backup of the entire snapshot. We call it um, environmental snapshot. So, um, so that includes everything about your application, right? Um, so we support incremental and the full backups. Initially, it's a full backup. We backup all the VM images. Um, and, and the sender volumes, um, and, and all the network configuration. So in the subsequent backups, we, differ, we basically calculate the difference, what changed between, between the environments. So if we have a new sender volume added to that uh, logical environment, so we back up that uh, as a full, and then the rest of the existing uh, resource as, a, as an incremental backup. So uh, we, we, we take care of um, what changes, what changed for the environment, and uh, back up those uh, changes. 
So um, our vision is to basically leverage what is out there in the cloud, right? So leverage the cloud capabilities like Elasticity and, uh, and the agility, and we want to redefine what, how the backup and data protection is done in the cloud, right? Obviously, we need to, um, we, we need to, implement, we, we need to support the bare minimal um, options like uh, backing up a VM and then recovering a VM or backing a, and re recovering single files or multiple files within, within that backup job. But since we, we are at an infrastructure, so we understand how your zones are laid out, how your regions are laid out. Um, so we, are, we, we support additional use cases, like for example, restoring it to a new availability zone. So you may have a production running in one availability zone, and you may set up some test app on a different availability zone, and now you want to basically test um, your production by taking a copy of your production and then restore it to a new availability zone for test purposes. So we take care of whether you have a different kind of network or whether you have a different uh, kind of volume, volume set up there. Um, and we translate the backup image, um, the, the metadata into what is available on the availability zone, on the new availability zone, and then we, st we restore the entire application onto the uh, new availability zone. So what about um, disaster recovery? So what if um, you have two different clouds and, uh, and you, have the you, you want the capability to keep the backups, but you want to replicate to the offsite, but when needed, you may want to leverage the remote cloud and then restore your applications up there, right? So we support that use case too. Um, the third, the, the fourth use case, instant restore. How many people used um, a guest fish tool? I think I, anyone who is, who is familiar. So it's a nice tool, right? No matter what your uh, VM uh, and what volumes are uh, created, so you can basically use the guest fish to explore more into um, what, the, what the composition of the VM is, whether, whether it has LVM volumes, whether it has different file systems. You can explore all those things and you can also tweak or fix any configuration changes that happen using the guest fish. It's a very popular tool. Um, what if um, your data production kind of provides that kind of tool, right? You have, let's say, 10 terabyte backup up there, right? And you want to run something. You want to basically respin that as a, as, a, as a workload quickly. So what if you can, you can, um, you can log in and, and, and basically explore little things, right? So with the instant restore, which, which we are working on, essentially you don't need to copy the data back to your production. You don't need to restore the entire thing. You can quickly respin all the VMs out of that backup image and then explore it. So for example, if you have data encrypted in the VM, um, with the regular um, uh, regular tools, you can't just open it up, right? So so that way you can you can spin up that VM and then you can explore more into the into into your point in time copy of it, um, and then enabling migration use cases. So it 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 goes beyond just doing a file backups. It is more about taking logical snapshot and then playing with it, right? So our architecture. Um, I briefly mentioned, like you know, we have uh, a QCOT image uh, which uh, can be uh, deployed on a standalone KVM box or into the glance, and then and then recreate it under one particular tenant. But the most popular deployment is basically have a standalone KVM and then uh, have this uh, VM uh, created out of this image. Um, you can spin as many VMs as you want based on your size of your cluster. And then we have, just like Nova, uh, the Cinder scheduler that basically does some kind of round robin to choose the right host. We choose, the, uh, we, we have a round robin based scheduler right now to choose, to basically load balance these backup jobs among these multiple VMs. And since our VMs are like completely stateless, you can crash and burn, but uh, you can spin up a new VM and then, the ba and then the, your backup service continues. Now, so um, it, it, I, I think if you are, um, uh, played with um, some of the APS that are available in the OpenStack. So they, they, depending on what the configuration of the VM, um, whether you are booting up the local disk, whether you are booting up the uh, Ceph, or whether you are booting up the sender volume, um, the APIs or snapshot operations work a little differently. Um, so to put together a complete solution with those APIs are very, very difficult. There are some gaps in the, in the way the OpenStack APIs are defined when it comes to backup and recovery. So, in, and, and the other, so in order to basically um, put, um, you know, fix those uh, gaps, 
we defined uh, a Nova extension. It is a small Python module that uh, need to be installed on, a, on your compute node. And um, the, the basic functionality of the Nova extension is uh, take a backup of the VM that is running on that compute node and then uh, cop basically create a backup image and then copy it to the uh, backup media, in this case, NFS or an object store. And during the restore operation, it does the same thing in the reverse and takes, it takes that copy from the backup media and then restore the contents to the, uh, uh, to the, to the compute node. Um, so each Nova extension is responsible for, for managing the backups of the, of the instances that are running on their compute node. Um, so if so the, the scale is important, right, when you are deploying a solution in the OpenStack. Um, obviously, you, know, you don't want to introduce any bottlenecks, but your architecture is also um, should enable you to basically scale your application. So in our case, if, 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 you, are, if you are good with um, uh, one compute node backing up the instances running on, a, on, a, on, on each compute node, um, you can essentially scale your solution uh, without, without introducing a lot of bottlenecks because the backup engine doesn't do much of IO except writing the metadata uh, to the backup engine but most of the data, data transfer is happening at the extension level. So you, so you can scale this application um, relatively easily compared to uh, com other solutions out there. Now, so we, we call our backup job a, 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 sorry, backup job a workload. Workload is nothing but a collection of VMs. So, um, yeah, and we have, we have a backup engine that basically identifies all the resources um, of those VMs and then invokes um, uh, various API calls to, to back up those things. So, um, for example, the backup job one, it has VM1, VM4, and VM9. Um, VM9, so um, the tri uh, the, when, when it is orchestrating, it basically in it invokes the right hooks into, the, into each of these computer and that's how it basically orchestrate the entire backup job for that group of VMs. Okay. So the other important thing is we don't use any proprietary uh, format for storing our backup. Uh, we stand as everything on the QCOUT images, right? Um, that is the very popular and very standard way of um, uh, creating backup, back, not only the VM images, but also the disk images. And there are um, thousands of tools out there that basically uh, helps you manage your uh, QCOUT images. So our base image is a QCOUT, and then all the incrementals are QCOUT images. And on the backup image, we those are well-formed QCOUT images. So for example, the latest um, QCOUT image, it has a back reference to the previous incremental previous image. So you can always run Kimu image info on the latest backup and, and basically walk through the whole chain. And you can, you can get fancy, you can also mount a QCOUT image to look at the contents. So, that, uh, the, so we stand is on the QCOUT, and the other one is, um, you, you, once you take a full backup, you never have to take a full backup again, um, because we synthesize the full backups at the back, and uh, it's, it's as simple as using the uh, chemo image commit, block commit command to, to basically uh, club two backup images into one, right? So that's how we move our ret your retention window. If you say like 30-day retention window that you want to keep all the backup copies, and on 31st day, we basically uh, combine the last two backup images into one, right? That's how we do the uh, uh, retention policy. And our restores are also pretty easy because we don't have to uh, aggregate all the incrementals and the full backup into one be in a staging area and then, and then restoring it. We can always take any, t any, any point in time within that chain and then say copy that into, into a volume or copy that into a VM image. So, our restore um, images are also very, uh, re restore operation is also very efficient. And uh, lastly, like, we also support something called uh, instant mount snap. Uh, so since these are QCOUT images, we can, we, can, we can mount them as a device and then discover the file systems in it and then, and then expose, um, expose the files in that particular point in time. Right, so, um, so we, we do support NFS and uh, Swift as um, backup medias. Um, support NFS, uh, the iSCSI, or the Ceph-based sender volumes. Um, we are actively working on integrating with other third-party uh, storage areas. Um, so it's a single backup uh, and recovery, and uh, we have a Horizon plugin um, that basically helps a tenant to manage their own backup, uh, back, backup jobs. Um, we have the RESTful API and then the uh, CLR wrapper. Um, we also have Ansible playbooks 
to deploy and manage um, your, 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 back, your, your backup solution. And um, it is a drop-in solution, so it's non-disruptive, so you can, um, you, you, can, you can onboard the solution on a running, uh, on a, on a running open stack. The only thing we do is basically, uh, since we register an extension to the Nova, we need to, um, uh, we need to restart the Nova API service, but usually people have two or three instances of Nova API service, rebooting one after another doesn't cause much disruption. So quickly, like the screenshot, just to give a flavor of like what our solution looks like. Um, so once you basically uh, boot the QCOT, how am I doing with the time? Is it okay? Okay, excellent. So um, we, you know, give, give the admin credentials. So we register into the Keystone as a, as a backup and recovery endpoint. Um, once you, it basically goes through uh, configuring our solution, and one, once you have a solution, and then you install um, the plugin, the Horizon, Horizon plugin, we introduce the tab called backups, and then we have the workload tabs, and you you can create a new backup job using, using as a tenant, create a new workload, and then add the VMs and set some policies on how frequently you want to take a backup and it does the whole thing. Um, so once you have a backup, um, so they have the details of what the backup uh, um, job contains and then it has a list of um, um, backups it has taken, right? And then it has a detail of uh, how frequently the backup is being performed. Once you dig down into a particular snapshot, it also gives you more information about what is backed up as, the, as part of the backup job. In this case, it's a four VM backup. Uh, just to keep it interesting, I have uh, various flavors of the VMs that are created, some of them booting up the Ceph, and some of them booting up the local disk. Uh, some of them have volumes mounted, some of them have multi-network multi, um, interfaces that are attached. So we capture everything, right? Um, and if you, if you were to basically, since we have hundreds of, let's say tens of um, backup images, so what if you want to, retrieve only a few files within a particular point in time, right? You don't have to go and restore the entire backup job. So we support uh, a mount snapshot. Once you choose a mount snapshot, um, we provide an explorer view into that particular point in time, and you can, you can download file or bunch of files uh, for file, file level recovery. Um, and then if you were to basically want to restore it to a new availability zone, right? Um, we, ha we have something called selector restore where you have more control about what that backup job is and how you want to restore it, whether you want to restore it to the same availability zone or into a different availability zone. Or if you want to map it to a new network so it doesn't interfere with your production, you can do that. Or you can choose a different volume type than the one it, we backed up from, you can choose that. And then if you want to exclude some of the VMs from your, from your restore, you can choose it. Or you, you want to change a flavor. Uh, of a VM for, for, for restoring that, you can, you can change. So we, we give more control about how you can restore your backup job from uh, backup job. So in summary, we went through like, you know, data protection challenge in the OpenStack, um, and uh, we are introducing Trilio Vault as a backup, as a, uh, a data protection as a service, more than a backup. Uh, we do uh, take environmental snapshots, not just the file or volume. Uh, we have one-click backup and uh, one-click uh, restore support. It's all completely tenant-driven. Um, it is forever scale. So just like any other service that you are doing, it is one more service that you need to basically plan and uh, um, uh, plan and deploy. Okay. Any questions? So there is one more demo presentation that's happening that that's going to happen on Wednesday. My uh, my colleague uh, Giri is going to uh, drive that uh, presentation, uh, but. We have a booth, um, A22, so stand, uh, stop by if you, ha if you need more information. Okay, any questions? If you have a question, can you please go to the mic there? You specifically mentioned iSCSI-based Cinder volumes. Any reason why? Because typically as Cinder uh, volume, if you have deployed as the back end, you're going to go through the Cinder driver or the driver plugin of that particular block storage in the back end. And if they have an FC, for example, as the preferred or, or as uh, their supported uh, data plane, uh, so how does that change what you have to offer on top? It should be pretty transparent to whether you come in through iSCSI or FC. Yeah. Your slide specifically mentioned iSCSI, so I was wondering right, why. Right, right. So, no, I, it, it, you drop something. So, um, we don't, we don't, um, we, I just mentioned for the um, ice. We, uh, there are a few things that we do better by tightly integrating with, for example, Ceph, 
right? Um, Ceph has a very good um, uh, API how to calculate the diff between two snapshots, and and we create a queue cut off. But the default implementation is compare two snapshots block by block, and then and then calculate the diff, right? We really want to integrate tightly with the storage vendors and then try to basically calculate the diff through the API. Um, so your question about, because we, we leverage how the same mechanism that the Nova uses for accessing the volume. So whether it's a QCard, whether it's a NetApp um, uh, NFS-based volume or iSCSI-based volume or F FC-based volume, we use the same connection string that Libvirt uses to basically read the contents. So the protocol doesn't matter for us, so it is more about um, accessing those two snapshots and calculating the difference. So can you uh, <clears throat> go into a bit of detail around how you provide disaster recovery? In other words, replicating the backup images site right. to site and then recovering at the secondary site. Absolutely. So, um, you know, it's all going back to like um, taking the logical environment of snapshot, right? Um, so we have the context. We basically capture the context. So that means we capture what that VM flavor is, what glance image is booted from, uh, what network types are, right? All those things. So for every time we take a backup, we capture all that information. So um, you, if you replicate that entire backup image to the remote site, right, we not only get what the, what the makeup of that ap application is, but also all the snapshots, individual snapshots. So we, our CLA supports something called import functionality. Essentially, what it imports the backup, all the metadata. And then once you import that through the wizard, you can run that selector restore. And then, and then basically, that, that is when we discover what is out there on your new cloud, right? Whether it's um, uh, the networks or whether it's uh, a different kind of storage type. So once you choose how you want to map your backup resources to new resource types, we go and restore the data. But you're replicating data. Right. We don't do replication, but we expect that uh, the storage, underlying storage does the replication. Other questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.